Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. And I hope you're all having a good Wednesday so far. For those of you who don't know, my name is Ingrid Velasquez. I'm the head of content and marketing for Folio. And with me today is Fabian Yu, our head of product. Hello, Fabian. Hi, Ingrid Tashan. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Yep. And like we've been said, we also have Sean Chen, who is one of our designers. Hello, Sean. Hi, everyone. Okay. So today we are talking about some exciting new features that we have just released and are about to release and how they can help you streamline proposals and manage product data more easily. We're also going to tell you about features that we have in the pipeline. And as usual, we are going to allocate some time to answer questions. So let's start. And Quibian, can you tell us all about client proposals, please? Sure. Um, so let me actually start sharing my screen. Give me a second. Um, it seems like I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, actually, never mind. Got it. Okay, so um, the biggest release we have done recently is the client proposal feature. So um, in the past, our clients can create invoice, but what has been missing is really the step in the middle, which is convert um, your specs into a client proposal and then set up some terms that you want your client to review and get them review the proposal before you can generate invoice. Um, therefore, we bridge the gap. So um, it's pretty simple. Um, when you are done uh, with your specifications and budget planning, you can select any items, the whole project or just certain space and then uh, select the product itself and then generate a client proposal. You can also add any uh, new changes to existing proposal. So once you click a client proposal, it will bring you to, I have a few already drafted, so let me get that um, launch here. So uh, when you have a client proposal, it was originally in a draft mode that you can further edit it. And then once you're uh, uh, done editing, for example, after you put in different uh, payment terms, you can put as many payment terms as you need, then you can either um, uh, create an invoice or uh, probably, you know, uh, send it for a client to approve. So actually, let me go to the one that was a draft status. Give me a second. All right, here we go. So yeah, so you can further edit a client proposal, add uh, retainers and services. And once you're done, uh, you can either download it as a PDF and send to uh, your clients uh, by email. So here we go. Or you can directly send a um, request for approval from Folio. And then, so just select the client information, uh, put in personal messages and hit send. Uh, what happened is that your client would get an email is an example uh, with your personal message and then a, a link to lead them to their proposal uh, that you share with them. So this is an example uh, that they would see. And uh, this one has been already approved. So um, the client can click the approve or reject or download as a PDF. Uh, again, client's interface is super simple. They don't really have um, the fancy dashboard that you, um, you are working on. And then once um, a item that has been approved, it will be sent back to you. You'll get notification of emails, which uh, you can further uh, like create a uh, invoice and then all make any changes. Um, if you want to uh, discuss a proposal with client face to face and you know um, you can get approval in person and then mark as approved uh, as in, in this interface as well and then uh, further process in creating the PO and invoice etc. Again you know everything um, is linked to your dashboard so you can uh, create a particular template uh, like what I have here, a procurement dashboard to check all my statuses for my client invoices and my purchase on all the invoices, all the documents that link it. So you can truly use Folio as an end-to-end -end, um, workflow management tool. 
And with this release, we also um, brush up their client um, invoices. So now it's basically uh, up to the standard with our, with our latest interface uh, that some of the people are already familiar with the purchase orders so they're easier to navigate. So that's all for the um, client uh, proposal and the new client invoice. And then um, Ingrid, I'm gonna pass back to you if you can talk about some of the enhancements on the dashboard navigation itself. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let me go ahead and see, uh, share my screen. All right. Um, okay, so like Fabian said, uh, we did make a few changes to the dashboard. Um, first is the ability to copy and paste information more easily. So in the past, when you wanted to add existing projects to Folio, or if you already had existing projects, but you were transferring um, data in bulk from a spreadsheet to Folio, something you could do was to upload it using this tool. But now you have an alternative and it's called bulk pasting. And it's just like copying data from one spreadsheet to another. So for example, I can copy right here, several adjacent cells at once, just highlight, copy, and even from multiple columns, and then just paste it into Folio, like you would with a regular spreadsheet. And that's it, super simple. So now in addition to bulk pasting, you can also now replace items directly from the library even though they're actual products and not placeholders. So you just go to the item that you want to replace, hover over this area, select replace from library. And from here, just select the item that you want to use, click use selected. And there you go. Now, if you would like to delete the contents of a cell, you can either delete the entire cell all at once or delete text um, one letter or digit at a time. To delete an entire cell all at once, you use the delete button on your PC keyboard. That would be this or that square delete button on your Apple keyboard. So let me show you how that's done. So here, for example, click delete. And that's how you do it. Now, if you want to delete letters or numbers, digits one by one, you use um, the large delete button on your Apple keyboard or the backspace in PC, like so. And last but not the least, you can move from one cell to another just by clicking on the arrow keys on your keyboard. And that's it for dashboard improvements. We also have some pretty exciting updates for those of you who use Revit or will be using it in the future. And here's Sean to tell us all about it. Sean? Hi, Ingrid. Uh, excited to be here. So I have some great news for those of you uh, who are struggling to match your folio database with your uh, Revit BIM model. So um, the real product is uh, still under development. So today, what I'm going to share is a uh, uh, high fidelity uh, prototype. Let me share my screen. So uh, for this round of uh, enhancement of the adding, uh, like any other adding in Revit, it will have its own icon. Uh, in the editing panel, and it will have its own UI panel uh, pop up here, and uh, you can log in with your account, and um, you can like uh, select the project you want to work on. So uh, in this version, we allow you to export like uh, product quantity, product specs, and the area information directly from Revit into Folio. So there are, if you choose export, there are three steps of mapping. 
So the first step is to uh, map the error information. So um, for the family counts, we have a default column set it up in the uh, folio, uh, in folio, it's preset. Uh, and uh, you can choose to map your error information um, based on your stru own structure. Like here, you can map a floor to a floor. Uh, you can map a room to a room. And uh, uh, for all these detailed floors, you can map it to your uh, structure. And if the name doesn't exist, uh, you can create a theme. So um, the system will just use the Revit name, the floor name in the Revit, and create a new floor in Folio. So the second step of mapping is to map the uh, family category to a folio division. Um, so uh, for divisions, you have to uh, pre uh, create a divisions in uh, folio first. Uh, the divisions have to be preset in folio. And you can choose like uh, which uh, right family category you want to map to a folio division. And uh, after finish the mapping of the division, uh, it goes to the last step of mapping, uh, which is to map the family parameter to a folio column. Uh, you see here for lamp one it has five family parameters, and you can choose like which folio column uh, you want to map to the to the Revit family parameter. And to finish all these steps of mapping, uh, you can choose continue. There will be a confirmation screen, and you can continue export. Uh, we provide you a report, a downloadable report uh, as a re record uh, of the export result. And you can choose to open folio. Um, we will have this preset column uh, named the Revit family name. Uh, what it does is if an item is exported from uh, Revit, it will record its uh, Revit family name here. So you will know like this item is from Revit and uh, what is what its um, Revit family name. If if you want to check check this item back in Revit, um, you will have the Revit, uh, Revit family, family name as a record. So um, that's uh, basically uh, how this uh, new version of the adding works. Uh, Ingrid, I'll pass the mic back to you. All right, thank you very much, Sean. This is exciting. I know that a lot of you have been waiting for it. Um, so those are the new capabilities that we have just released and are about to release in the next couple of weeks. Um, and as promised, we do have several other features that we are currently working on. So Ian, would you like to tell us all about what we have coming? Sure. So I hope everybody can see my screen. Um, so a few, um, like I would say that uh, common things that's been asked by users a lot um, that I think will benefit everyone. Um, um, so in all different stage of your process. So uh, the first one is their history lock. So um, we will provide a um, new function called like activity centers. And in the activity centers, you can see both, um, you can do comments as well as history locks. So comments basically, you know, um, uh, people can send messages to each other and history log uh, showing what uh, edit has been done by individual items. You can also filter by uh, different users, like for example, what contractors um, has like no change or whatever date or the values. And then you can also search by date by um, uh, internal team members as well. And then uh, comments, self-explanatory, you can add comments um, on individual items or on a specific group of items or this project itself and then reply um, uh, between uh, external users as well as internal users. So, and then uh, we are continue improving their procurement process, uh, especially um, uh, there are different browser and whistles we're gonna add on in the client proposal and invoice and also improve the collaborations between um, uh, the purchasers and the suppliers. Uh, we will also improve the library search. Uh, some of our users, um, they uh, have been, you know, using the client uh, database to map in different projects within different buildings. Um, and so we would add a search criteria in the libraries by clients' names uh, so that you can potentially search for all the um, items that you have ever 
um, you know, specs or purchase for certain buildings for certain clients. Um, we will also add a flag in the library um, so that if you want to search something that without image, you can do that as well. Um, so yeah, so those are the things that we're working on. Uh, hopefully we can get those out uh, before the year. And if not, there will be some uh, point in the first quarter in 2021. And then, so um, now we, I guess we can open up the mic uh, to, for some Q&A. If you guys have some questions, uh, please start typing in, in the chat, in the Q&A. So we actually do have a question already from Joshua Hervey. Uh, what is going to happen with the integration slash imports of Pinterest currently doesn't work? So yeah, we have a ticket on it, um, that, uh, Dasher, we cannot really reproduce it. So some of our um, developer will reach out to, you know, check in your account. Uh, from Lucas Cause, is the link to Revit live? It's not live yet, but we are final stage of the testing. Um, so hopefully we can get it rolled out either by the end of this month or early next month. Thank you, Lisa. And from Stephanie Wexler, will the interface with Revit require a plugin for Revit? Uh, Sean, so I believe the answer is yes, but correct me if I'm wrong because you're the expert on that. Yes, uh, uh, you, you need to like install it. All right, so that's a yes. Um, okay, and from Travis Fries, uh, one purchase order can have multiple invoices. I can't seem to have more than one invoice assigned to a purchase order and the amounts have to be exact. Am I missing something or is that how it is built? Um, so Travis, are you referring to the supply invoice or the client invoice? If it's a supply invoice, you should be able to attach multiple supply invoice um, in the purchase order. Um, if you are not able to do that, I suggest um, you ping us on the live chat, uh, maybe after the webinars, and then uh, we can have a screen share session. Yep. All right, so Travis says, yes, it is supplier invoices that he's referring to. Um, yeah, please reach out to us, Travis. And uh, OK, awesome. Um, follow up question from Stephanie. Any idea what that plugin is? Uh, I'm guessing we'll be sharing that when it's available, right? Yeah, we will provide you a link to download the uh, installer in our system, in Infolio, in the integration page. Okay, thank you, Sean. All right, do we have any other questions? All right, so um, if you guys don't have any of the any other questions, I guess that's it for us today, short and sweet. Um, and we do wanna thank all of you for coming. We really appreciate you spending your time with us. And as usual, please message us with any suggestions or questions or um, feedback that you have. All of, again, all of these features that we keep rolling out is because you guys asked for it. So please, Keep in touch. We love hearing from you. And um, thank you very much also, Khabian and Sean, for taking time out of your busy day. And everyone have a good day.
All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you.